Kristen and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about evening routines. You guys have been asking about this and I thought I should do an updated evening routine to tell you some things that have been working for us and just some things that I have learned. My number one piece of advice to make your evenings a lot more smooth is do not feel the need to be creative. Once you find something that works, stick with it and live that on repeat as much as possible. And yeah, it just helps so much, especially if you have young kids like I do. So thank you guys so much for clicking on this video and let's get into it. So I guess I would say my evening starts when I usually come downstairs from editing over the kids' nap time and I start getting supper together. Um, a lot of times I like to prep ahead of time and just have like meat marinating ready for the grill or something like that. But tonight I was actually cooking and I was making my chicken pot pie. I will definitely include the recipe down below. In fact, I'll actually put a link where you can click on it and you can download an actual like cute recipe card that you can keep for yourself. Um, yeah, this recipe is so good. Um, it reminds me of my grandma and my mom and Josh says it's super good, but he says it's still not as good as his grandma's because he says his grandma puts more noodles in. <laughs> So even though I doubled the noodles, I guess next time I'm tripling the noodles. Now the chicken pot pie I am talking about here is actual soup. Um, it's like a soup style chicken pot pie, not um, what you might be picturing like a shepherd's pie or something like that. I don't know, this is just what we always grew up calling chicken pot pie and yeah, definitely try the recipe if you have not yet. I believe I did share it once before in a different video, um, but I wanted to highlight it again here. Yeah, it was just a great fall evening kind of meal. So here I am just dicing up all the vegetables and getting that together and I did want to highlight my soup pot because I have an amazing deal for you guys and I wanted to share it in this video. I have a white Marquette Castings Dutch oven and if you did not get a chance to buy one the last time, I know they gave me a promo a while back and it sold out really quickly. So if you want to get a white Dutch oven, maybe jump on it right now if you can. They also have red and blue and um, I believe black. I don't know, you have to go on their website and look. Their Dutch oven is definitely worth it. It is super sturdy, it's gonna last a lifetime and I just love like the enamel interior because it's so much easier to clean. I have the six quart one here. They do have a four quart one as well, I believe, but no matter which one you pick, you're going to love it, I know. And I'm just so glad that they agreed to work with me on this video because I cook with this all the time and now I get to share a promo code with you. So definitely click on the link down below if you've been in the market for a Dutch oven or you'd like to ask for one for Christmas. Don't wait long though and make sure you pick yourself one up. Yeah, I cook a lot and I really like this Dutch oven a ton. My mom always had a Dutch oven and I always thought, you know what, I can't really afford one. They're kind of like fancy. Definitely Definitely, definitely glad I finally have a Dutch oven. So thank you Marquette Castings for working with me on this video and yeah, for helping my subscribers out as well. Yeah, I hope that benefits some of you guys. So I won't go through every step of this recipe because I did that before in a different video, but like I said, the recipe is down below. Josh gets home, it varies a lot um, when he gets home because he works out of the home as a construction worker. He owns his own business and so sometimes his hours are a little different if he has to run check a job or when he's finishing up a job or whatever. I usually look for him between 5 and 5.30. Today he was home a little bit early so I roped him into helping me out a little bit with the kitchen. So Josh just got the kids up here and I gave them a little snack to hold them off before supper time. They're usually pretty hungry when they wake up from their nap and this was around 5 o'clock and they just like to sit on the stoop and like watch the neighborhood. We live in a cul-de-sac. It's quiet, but there's lots of things happening, so it's like fun to sit there and watch, and yeah, they just eat their snack, and yeah, chill. <laughs> so here I just set the table, and sometimes I like to get my three-year-old to help me. Um, as you know, anytime you involve a three-year-old with chores, it takes longer, but in my experience, it's worth it. But this night, she was playing so good outside with Fletcher and helping me out that way by occupying him. He's one and a half. Um, that I decided not to disturb them and just I set the table myself. It was fine. <laughs> 
My dress is actually an Amazon dress. I will try to link it below. I got it last fall and I wear it a ton. Um, so yeah, you guys can check that out if you're looking for a nice, comfortable dress. The buttons do not work in case any of you nursing mamas were wondering. Sorry about that, but it is a really good price. And I also made a baguette or a part of a baguette that I had gotten at Walmart. I just heated it up in the oven. And if you are local or I don't know if you can order this online or not, but if you can, oh, this would be the best, like, your family would love you if you gave this to them for Christmas, but Oleo is an awesome, I guess they sell like olive oils and balsamic vinegar. Anyway, they have so many good flavors, but I finally splurged and bought myself some of this white lemon balsamic. And so I mixed it with extra virgin olive oil and just brushed that on the baguette before I put it in the oven just to toast it up a little bit. So good, oh my goodness. Um, but yeah, just in case you're a local and you happen to be ever in the Lidditz area, definitely stop in at Oleo. Um, yeah, they have so much good stuff. <laughs> pray before our meal times. We are Christians. We are Mennonites. If you're unfamiliar with us, I have lots of videos on my channel um, that you can click around on if you're a little more interested. But yeah, we just prayed and thank God for our meal and dug in. Very good. Needs more noodles. That's it. Perfect. I already doubled the noodles. Yeah. Look. Look. Do you like your soup? Anyway, so we sat down and we ate our supper and right now in Pennsylvania, it's getting pretty dark pretty quickly and it's not even daylight savings time yet when I filmed this video. So what we usually do after supper, we usually just leave the supper on the table. I know everything sticks to the plates then later, but it's worth it because we want to go outside and soak up a little bit of sunlight while we still can. Sometimes we'll go on a walk. We have a walking trail nearby us or we'll take a bike ride or sometimes we're just more low key and Josh will like hit golf balls in the yard and the kids will ride their bikes and... I'll sit and watch or weed or whatever. Um, but yeah, we try to just be outside for a little bit in the evening because it gets dark so fast. I don't know what we're gonna do when daylight savings time hits. I guess we'll probably just go out and hang out outside before supper. This night we just went on a little walk around the cul-de-sac. Um, Ivani is learning to actually pedal bike, but tonight we let her just use her little strider bike and it's just a chance to chit chat, whatever, um, get outside for a little bit because then you're cooped up the rest of the evening in the dark, right? Oh, I am so affected by the weather. I know you guys probably are too. Like you just have much more energy when there's more sunlight out there. So soak up whatever you can get when you can get it right. So after supper, I usually make it a point to like fly around as quickly as I can and just try to get the meal cleaned up and the food put away. Sometimes I will set things on the counter to cool off a little bit before I put them in the fridge. Um, I like to sweep the floor at that point if I get the chance to. The kids usually just play by themselves, honestly. They are like full of imagination and stuff. Ivani does really good at like leading out and they just have all their little games they like to play. You're putting a mask on Fletcher. Um, but usually at this time, I'm not giving the kids too much attention. I'm just like focusing on getting the kitchen cleaned up. Sometimes I'll get a few things off my to-do list. Um, but for the most part, I try not to have anything on my to-do list after supper. And when I get that done, then I like to make a point of playing with the kids at some point. Sometimes they help me with work. That counts as playing, right? Um, but yeah, we just try to make it fun and just be involved with them. And they are involved with us. <laughs> Daddy. No, it's Fletcher and Mommy. Say Mommy. Mommy. Can you give Mommy a kiss? <laughs> Gotta go. <laughs> Wait, you wanna jump for the camera? <laughs> yes, this is his idea. <gasps> Woo! <laughs> again? Oh, again. Are you showing off for the camera? <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> oh, 
the thing they like to do right now is go out on the sun porch and like make all these little like beds and they have like these little sleepovers where they lay there and pretend they're sleeping. Like how is that a game? I don't know but at the moment that's what they're doing. It'll be over in like three or four days. That's just how toddlers are. They get on a kick and then they're doing that for a while. But Ivani asked me to read a book. Normally we would do that right before bed but I was like sure why not and I picked up this Bible story book and was reading that to them. And yeah, she was very interested in all the pictures and stuff. I will try to link this book down below if I can find it. They uh, really were enthralled by the pictures and I just kind of gave them like <laughs> two sentence stories Look. about each picture. Look. This is Jesus at the well. Look. Well, I went to the well some one, one time when I, was, when, I was, when I was a baby. You went to a well? No, with, you went to a well with me and I was a little baby. What, what was in the well? It was, it, was, it was the same like he was at. Right here? What do we do there? We, we like do that. And Josh was just playing with him here and I filmed it a little bit because I thought it was so cute. Josh is in his volleyball clothes. He goes to volleyball once a week and I do as well. We both play on different teams. He plays with the men's league. I play with the ladies league. Um, so it is kind of like, a, it is a little bit busy some evenings, but I like that he only starts at like 8 o'clock or 8.30 sometimes. And then tonight was bath night, they needed it. And so Josh often will take care of bath times, but here is some of the products that we've been using lately. I just ran out of the kids shampoo, so I don't have that to show you, but I will link that for you down below if you're looking for a kids shampoo. These bath drops are super fun. You can get them at Target. I think you can get them on Amazon. I'll link them down below. Um, just do not give it to young kids because even Fletcher sometimes forgets what it is and will think he's supposed to do it in his mouth. And I just use this time to tidy up the upstairs. I sometimes do this as part of my morning routine. It hadn't happened that day. Um, and so Ivani usually helps out as well with this. But this evening I just did it myself while they were taking baths. Sometimes it's just easier to do it yourself, especially when you're trying to film. I'll make my bed if it hasn't been made already in the morning, gather up all the wash, and here I was just taking it downstairs. I like to sort laundry every day and then just do whichever load is the biggest or the fullest or is the most pressing. And so I did start a load of laundry and put it on delayed timer so that I could be ready to throw it in the dryer in the morning. If you do not do this method for laundry, I definitely think you should try it for like a week or even two weeks and see what you think. If you hate it, stop it right then and there. It's not for everyone, but I made fun of this like method for a while and then I tried it out and I just love it. It sounds like you're doing laundry all the time, but you're really not. It's kind of like, think about it. How often do you wash your kitchen counter? You probably can't say because you just do it kind of it's like part of your daily routine kind of how laundry is I take about maybe 10 minutes a day doing it and that's because right now in the season of life I'm not hanging it out I know that's such like a Mennonite cliche I should be hanging my laundry out on my Amish wash line but Josh is like look Megan there'll be a time for that someday for now use your dryer so that's what I do okay I'm already starting to feel like there's got to be a lot of links down below but I will put a link to my Amazon storefront I believe that's where I have my laundry sorter and we really do love it. Well, I should say I love it. I'm the one that does laundry most of the time. <laughs> and Ivani has this thing where she loves to run around in circles right before bedtime. And so I usually just humor her and a lot of the time she wants me to run around in circles with her. I don't get it, but hey, if it's gonna help her sleep better, why not? So yeah, it might look like we're a little crazy. That's just part of our evening routine, guys. Oh, and I did want to talk about the little potty seat in her room. I'm half embarrassed of it, but at the same time, I'm thinking this might be a hack that some of you moms might appreciate. So I thought I would just mention it here. Ivani has been potty trained since about right on two years old, and it was going great. It was fine. She never really wet the bed. So I switched her right to underwear even at nighttime pretty soon after that. But I still like did not want her to feel at all like she, you know, couldn't go to the bathroom at night or anything like that and she was pretty small yet you know just turned two so I started putting a little potty seat in her room so she can go to the bathroom you know without getting out of bed the one thing that I love about our bedtime routine is that when we put our kids to bed they're in bed they don't get up they don't get out well Fletcher's in a crib yet so he can't get out but like Ivani knows to stay in her room um, and she just stays in there and so even if she needs the bathroom she can stay in her room she doesn't need to be wandering the house which I love I really really love it um, but I think at some point here she's gonna be a little too big for this but if you have like a two-year-old or a newly potty trained kid and they're sleeping through the night um, but they wake up when they have to pee and that kind of thing put this little toilet seat here and yeah 
they have it if they need it and if they don't it's all good too um it's kind of a weird thing i get it but i just thought it might be helpful for some of you guys and don't feel weird if you do it i do it too so <laughs> Josh read them a bedtime story, a Bible story. I know we had done this earlier, but that was just because they wanted to. Um, this is just our normal family devotions, I guess you could say, although we usually don't all sit down together. It's usually just me or Josh reading them their Bible story before we put them to bed. And I'll link this book down below too. Um, I really like this one. It is nice short stories in very childish language. Um, and yeah, the kids really do like it. It's great for their short attention spans. Another thing that is kind of part of our evenings is when I put Ivani to bed, I will turn on the little doll seat, we call it. It is a, this little china doll that I had as a kid. My mom would always turn on my little music box as I was falling asleep, and now I do that with Ivani with the exact same doll, but I keep it up on a shelf in the closet because it's really old and it already has a broken foot. That was my fault, yes, and I just didn't, it's not something I want her playing with, but I like to continue this little family tradition. We don't actually have certain kids that we put to sleep. Often it works out that Josh puts Fletcher down and I put Ivani down. They both get a cup of water from Ivani and milk for Fletcher. Um, yeah, Fletcher still gets milk morning and evening. My pediatrician told me that that would be good for him, um, that baby's his age, or he's like 18 months. They still need a lot of fat from the milk um, to help their brain develop. So that's just what we're doing, but Ivani gets kind of plugged up if she has too much milk, so she just gets some water. Don't worry, she doesn't drink a whole cup of water usually when she's going to bed. In fact, in the mornings, it's often almost full still, but I mean, she's a little human, right? Sometimes we wake up and we're thirsty. So I just leave that in her room and I don't ever have to get up to give her water or anything like that. So yeah, it's just a system that works really good for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then confession time again. I am not one of those people that goes to bed with the house completely clean. Um, I'm just not that type of person. In the evenings, I'm already like winding down and slowing up for the day. And I'd much rather worry about it in the mornings. I do like to make sure that the kitchen's cleaned up and the random items that are strewn around the house are put away, but the toy room. <laughs> This is what it looks like. Yeah, we will worry about that another time. In fact, I usually only clean the toy room up on Fridays or Saturdays and just like reset it and then we'll go, you know, about the week and it will get messy again throughout the week. But you know what? It's a contained area and I've learned to just not let it get to me. I just grabbed my little shark vacuum here and I just cleaned up a few spots on the floor because, yeah, I mean, leaves were getting drug in and stuff. That's something about this time of year, like the leaves. They're gorgeous, but boy, they get drug in all over the place, get crushed to a fine powder and, oh my. Anyway, comment down below. Do you have trees on your property? I'd actually find that very fascinating. Well, our whole one side of our property is lined with trees, but then we have about like seven or eight, I would say, that we have to like mow around. And then I usually just go around and make sure the lights are turned off. Josh is not a big one for this. He always forgets to turn lights out, so that's kind of become my job. I don't know how, I guess, um, I used to always leave lights on, but he's even worse at it than me. Kind of like, I guess I can't knock him too much because I'm always the one that leaves all the cupboard doors hanging open. He's the one that leaves all the lights on, so I just go around and turn them off before I head upstairs. Oh, I'm drinking... This is Harvest Peach Tea in my water, but it's just ice water, it's nothing special. My voice I lost last week and it's only coming back now, so gotta keep it lubricated. Um, you guys have been asking what I like to do once the kids are in bed, so I don't have a lot of that filmed for obvious reasons, but I thought I would just kinda go over that a little bit, um, maybe give you some ideas for yourself. I'm not a night owl, so I'm not one of those people that stays up and like cleans or has a big long list. The most work I'll probably do once the kids are in bed is like some laundry, or if I have a video that needs some touch up on it or I have comments to answer, a lot of times that's when I do my Instagram like DMs and stuff like that just to try to get my inbox down to empty by the end of the evening. But other than that, I do not do a lot of housework. Josh will sometimes stay up late if he has book work to do or he does all the shipping for Fox Sparrow. So if there's a lot of shipping to do, he often will be up doing that. 
he enjoys it and there's often a football game or something he likes to watch while he's doing that. Um, and so yeah, it's just a system that works out well for us. So after the kids are in bed and I've had the things done that I need to do, um, tidied up the house, that kind of stuff, I will take a shower and this is my time to watch like mindless whatever I want to watch. I will save things that need watching like with your eyeballs. I like throughout the day I will often have like a YouTube video or a podcast playing even like counting on like by the Duggars or something. I'll have it like, li I'll listen to it sometimes while I'm working or something. But if there's something that I'd like to watch, like the shower is my time to do it. And I know you guys are like, Megan, you're ridiculous, but hey, that is my time to watch something. Um, I don't really like my kids to see me sitting around vegging out. So I don't really watch anything while they're awake. Um, it's, I guess, my own little guilty pleasure in the evenings. I will prop my phone up on the top of our shower and I will watch something as I'm showering. <laughs> Just thought I'd let you know, try it. Do not make fun of me. My husband made fun of me so much at first and then he started doing it too. So it is a very nice way to relax and unwind, especially if you have hair to wash or something. It takes a while. Just being honest, that's usually part of my evening routine and it's something I look forward to like crazy. After that, I will usually go and, yeah, like I said, do any touches on a video I have to do or like work, um, answering some emails or things like that that came in while, you know, my work time is usually from two to five. So anything that happened in between five and like nine o'clock. The kids go to bed at 8.30. I don't know if I mentioned that. It used to be eight o'clock, but now in the summer, it's been 8.30 to 8.30 they've been sleeping. Um, and that hasn't really changed yet. I kind of like it. I think I'm gonna continue that even into the winter. I don't know, we'll see. I like the 8.30 to 8.30 thing, and yes, my kids do sleep really well. I am super blessed, and I know it. Then I'll just get into bed, and I know you're not supposed to take your phone to bed with you, but who made that rule up? I don't know, I do. I take my phone to bed with me, and I will usually, that's when I like look through Instagram. I rarely check Instagram throughout the day. Um, I'll post on there, um, but often if I get on Instagram, I just fall down a rabbit hole, and then like I don't really have time during the day to be on Instagram for a long time, and so, like it annoys me then if I'm like trying to do it and like Ivani is right there or like whatever. I just don't, Instagram I usually do in the evenings. I used to do it during work time too, but I found that it just doesn't work. It takes up too much time. So in the evening, I will go on Instagram and just like consume a little bit, see what people are up to, watch some stories, watch some, look at some posts. By the way, follow me on Instagram if you're not. It's a much more like candid, unfiltered, I don't know. You'll see more stuff on there if you'd like to. It's Megan Fox Unlocked. Anyway. And then that's also when I answer all my DMs and try to get them down to zero. Uh, DMs take a lot of time, but it's also the best way for me to like connect with you guys personally. In the comments and stuff, I don't sometimes see them all. Um, and yeah, I just, I like to really be active in my DMs. So yeah, I'll usually do that. Sometimes it takes an hour, usually less. And then I like to set my alarm and turn off the lights around 10. Um, Josh will usually come up around 9.30 as well. We try to get up at around 10. He gets up at like 5 the next day and I usually get up around 6.30. So 10 o'clock is just what works for us. It's kind of like a happy medium. It's not really early and it's not really late. I don't know, maybe you guys would argue. But that's kind of how our evenings look. Um, and like I said, don't feel the need to be creative. Find something that works for your family and then do it. And I'm sure there's probably something in my video that would like not work for you at all. But there's probably something in my evening routine that you guys could adopt for yourself as well. So yeah, I hope you found this helpful and entertaining a little bit too. It's always nice to see how other people have made it work in their stage of life. And yeah, also I wanted to thank Marquette Castings for that awesome deal and for partnering with me in this video. I really appreciate all the sponsors that have been partners of my channel. It's just a, such a blessing. I appreciate it so much. And just to, it's really fun to work with brands that I love and that I use and then I can share about it with you guys and I get a kickback for it. It's just a beautiful thing. So thank you all for watching. I appreciate you guys showing up each week. I just, you guys mean more to me than you'll ever know. And I am excited to do a giveaway with you guys soon if I ever reach 100K subscribers. Um, that's not the goal here. The goal here is to have like engaged viewers and friends that we can like have a nice tight knit community here. So I'm not really necessarily worried about the number, but at the same time, it is a fun milestone to reach and I definitely want to give back. So feel free to share this channel with anybody who you think would like it. Just the normal mom content is what's on here, but it's through my eyes as a Mennonite mom. So, so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye everyone.